Ah, the Super League. Probably the biggest piss take and slap in the face to football fans since uh, anything that I can actually remember. I couldn't believe it when I heard the news. It was actually a story um, that had some truth to it. But the more I think about it, the more I think that probably within the next three or four decades, it could be an inevitability um, that we see a Super League, um, sadly. But I think it's such a slap in the face from the 12 clubs who did it. Oh, we're the big 12. Man City, they've not won a Champions League or a European Cup. Spurs, they've won one trophy, the League Cup, in like 30 or 40 odd years or something like that. Why do they deserve to be in the Super League? Just so they've got a cool new stadium and they sold Gareth Bale for 100 mil a few years back. It's absolutely ridiculous. Honestly, these clubs, they don't necessarily deserve to be in the Super League. And it's not just City and it's not just Spurs. I'm a Liverpool fan and even I'm annoyed that even they wanted to be in there. Of course I am. All football fans were, I suppose. But um, what gives them the right, these 12 clubs, to be in there over some of the fantastic clubs that are out there in Europe just now? In this video, I will be running through my alternate Super League, my 12 clubs that I believe have just as much of a right to be there as the original 12. So let's get straight into it, starting with Bayern Munich. And I know, I know, before you start jumping down my throat in the comment section below, the German teams didn't want to be in the Super League for um, sort of good reasons. Yeah, they didn't want to be in it because uh, they believe in um, the current football system and they believe in fans and uh, they run very, very well. So I understand that the German teams will never be in it. Um, well, we say that now. Um, who knows what the future holds? But yeah, the German teams didn't want to be in it originally. But yeah, Bayern Munich, why do they deserve to be in it? I think we're all aware of uh, what kind of a club Bayern Munich are. I think we know what a huge club they are. Uh, the biggest in Germany by far, um, with 32 league titles, 20 cups, six European cups slash Champions Leagues, of course. They retained it thrice in a row, didn't they? 74, 75, 76, Beckenbauer's era, and then three in more modern times in 01, 13, and 2020, the COVID um, Champions League final. They've got a UEFA Cup, they've got a Cup Winners Cup, a Super Cup, uh, sorry, two Super Cups, two Intercontinental Cup Cups, and two FIFA Club World Cups. This is a team that is huge on on the world and European stage and if any Super League didn't have Bayern Munich in it it's not a Super League for me. Staying in Germany Borussia Dortmund of course I've already said that the German teams won't necessarily want to join the Super League and I get that but the uh, yeah the German Giants are hugely and highly on my bucket list they have one two three four five six seven eight league titles they have five German cups as well and they also have themselves a Champions League which they won in 1997 they won the 1966 Cup Winners Cup they've been runners-up in the UEFA Cup a couple of times and they've even been the Super Cup runners-up and they have won the Intercontinental Cup the year of them winning the Champions League they also won what was the precursor to the Club World Cup Dortmund and Bayern Munich two world giants in world football of course who deserve to be in the conversation for the alternate Super League. Again, I just want to say, like, I don't know where the kind of stance is for a lot of these clubs when it comes to Super League. Would they... I know the German teams, I've covered like the fact that I know that they didn't want to be in it. Would there be other teams in there who I will be mentioning in this video who, if they would have got an invite, would they have sort of accepted it? I'm not sure. The next team that we'll be looking at is Ajax. The, uh, yeah, the huge giants from the Netherlands, of course, the Netherlands' biggest club, not included in the original um, Super League, strangely enough. I don't know whether it's their doing or the doing of said Super League, but 36 Dutch titles, 20 Dutch Cups, 9 Johan Cruyff Shields, 4 Champions League slash European Cups, 1 Cup Winners Cup, 1 UEFA Cup, 2 Super Cups. They are absolutely huge. They even have two Intercontinental Cups as well. Again, the precursor to the Club World Cup, which Dortmund also won. They're a massive club, aren't they, Ajax? Huge on the world stage. Everyone around the world who knows anything about football knows about Ajax. And they also deserve a shot in my alternate Super League. I actually went and made a stadium tour video at Ajax. Sadly, they weren't playing, I don't think, when I was in Amsterdam, just pre-COVID. I'm going to have to go back and see them play. But another team that I've seen on the channel, I have actually seen play, are Feyenoord. I believe that they deserve to be in the alternate Super League as well. Let's have a look into why. Well, I know Ajax are the biggest club in, uh, in the Netherlands, of course, but... Feyenoord have a lot to shout about as well with their 15 league titles and 13 
uh, Dutch Cups as well. They even have a European Cup to their name. They have two UEFA Cups to their name as well. Really, really historic side in Europe. They're obviously the runners-up in the very first Conference League as well. They also have an Intercontinental Cup, the precursor to the Club World Cup. And of course, yeah, they won that European Cup, the big one in 1970, in the San Siro against Celtic. Um, I'm in green today. We will be talking about Celtic very shortly. Um, of course, Scottish fans, I'm not leaving out the big two here. Definitely couldn't do that. But yeah, surely uh, Feyenoord with their history in Europe, of course, beating pre uh, beating Celtic in the European Cup, who had won the uh, European Cup previously just three years ago, three years before they um, they lost against Feyenoord Celtic. So, yeah, why shouldn't uh, Feyenoord have a shot in there as well? Our third and final Dutch team of this video, a team that I've seen before, but pre-YouTube, sadly, uh, PSV Eindhoven. Again, somewhere I'm going to have to have to go. PSV are a very, very successful side within the Netherlands, they are the record winners of the Johan Cruyff Shield, believe it or not. The sort of uh, the uh, like community shield of, of the Netherlands. You'd have thought that would have been Ajax, but no, it is PSV apparently. They have 10 Dutch Cups and 24 Eredivisie titles. What a huge club they are. They obviously have a UEFA Cup as well, but they also have a Champions League or European Cup as it was back in 1998 when they won it against Benfica in the final, who have a curse on them. I've covered the Benfica curse before, uh, but yeah, PSV, after a boring 0-0 draw within the final in Stuttgart, beat Benfica 6-5 on penalties to win their first and only European Cup. See, all these teams that I've mentioned so far, PSV, they've won a European Cup. Spurs haven't won a European Cup. Man City haven't won a European Cup. Atletico Madrid haven't won a European Cup. But all these teams want to buy their way into some fake Super League. It just makes my blood boil. I know I'm smiling, but inside, it annoys me. Now then, moving on to two teams I know very, very well. Firstly... We'll talk about Rangers. Rangers Football Club, hugely successful. In their words, the most successful team in the world. I have done a video on that before. But I sort of investigated, I went to Ibrox and sort of investigated if Rangers really are the most successful team in the world. And it's sort of an imperfect question because um, we have a lot of competitions in Scotland, like the League Cup, that aren't in other countries. So, yeah. And there's no, like, Community Shield here. Whereas other clubs who claim to be the most successful in the world count Community Shields and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's an imperfect question. But Rangers, having called themselves the most successful club in the world, maybe correctly, uh, maybe incorrectly in some people's eyes as well, um, deserve surely a shot at the Super League. Like, they're a massive, massive club. And uh, we've seen that with the fan base this year and with how well they've done in Europe and like, how far the fans have really pushed the team in Europe. The fact that Rangers are not in the conversation of the Super League, in my eyes, is absolutely criminal. And just listen to this for a fact, Rangers were the first British team to reach a UEFA final. It was the 1961 Cup Winners' Cup, I think it was, Fiorentina, which they lost Rangers, sadly. But yes, they were the first British team to reach a European final. So, and by British, I mean, they beat all the English teams as well. I think Spurs, actually. All, oh, I've been slagging off Spurs for not winning many trophies recently and why they're by no way in Super League. I think Spurs might have been the first English team to reach a European final, maybe even to win a European competition. Um, but yeah, Rangers were the first British team to win, uh, to get to a European final, and surely they deserve a spot in the Super League. They also have 55 league titles as well. That's a lot. So yes, look, I am in green subconsciously. I think just threw this on to film this video. I filmed two videos today, so a quick costume change uh, into my green jumper as we talk about Celtic. Of course, we just mentioned them earlier as they lost the uh, European Cup, of course, against Feyenoord, but they also won the European Cup, the first British side to win the big European honor. 1967, the Lisbon Lions, again, covered them a lot been to the uh, stadium out there, I've made numerous videos here in Scotland about that as well. So yeah, they won the European Cup first, not only British side to win it, but the first team from Northern Europe to win it as well. The only three teams to have won it before Celtic were Real Madrid, Inter Milan and Benfica. Two of those are in the uh, original Super League, Inter and Real. Benfica aren't, we'll get onto Benfica in just a second. Uh, but yeah, Celtic, a uh, huge club of course, 
loads and loads of league titles, loads and loads of cups, loads and loads of league cups. They've done well in Europe, of course, they've reached UEFA Cup Finals, they've reached champion, uh, European Cup Finals, rather. Again, much like Rangers, they've got this massive, massive fan base. And I don't think people around the world really realise how big it is. But when you move here, I certainly didn't realise how big it was. I obviously knew of the two clubs. But and since I've moved here, you just realise what a goldfish bowl Scotland is. And, um, yeah, these two clubs, I mean, imagine not having Rangers and Celtic in the Super League. Crazy stuff. Next up is a bit of a left field choice. We're heading over to Northern Ireland to see Linfield now. So Linfield recently won their 56th league title. Of course, Rangers calling themselves the most successful team in the world. They have 55 league titles. Linfield pipped them this year as Celtic, of course, retained the Scottish League, meaning that Rangers would stay on 55. Linfield won the Northern Irish League and they are now on 56 league titles. They've also won the Irish Cup 44 times, the Irish League Cup 10 times as well. They have so many trophies. All you got to do is scroll through their Wikipedia. I could be here all day. Here we go. County Antrim Shield 43 times, Charity Shield 4 times, Gold Cup three times, uh, 33 times, City Cup 24 times, Ulster, 50, Ulster Cup 15, Floodlit Cup 2, 4 <laughs> the top four cups. To, yeah, there's, there's, the list just goes on and on and on. But 56 league titles, you'll be hard pressed to find a club in world football with more league titles than Linfield. It's a very well known fact in football that Real Madrid won the first five ever European Cup finals in a row. The only team to have won that many in a row still to this date. I don't know how um, sort of seriously other teams took it at that point. But Real Madrid got a great head start. They obviously now have 14, but five of them were the first ever five. Who was the team to break the Real Madrid dominance? Well, it was Benfica who went on to win the next two. So the first seven were won by Real Madrid and then Benfica who won the next two. Benfica, an incredible club who I've... Um, who I've covered a lot, well, slightly, when I went out to Portugal. I have made a few vids about them. Um, they're an incredible club. And like I say, yeah, two European Cups in 61 and 62. There's a bit of a curse on the club. Bella Gutmann, their legendary Hungarian manager who won them those two European Cups, wanted some investment in the team. I think he may have wanted a new contract for himself as well. And he said, never in a hundred years will Benfica win another European trophy. And to this day, they still haven't. They won the UEFA Youth League, I think, this year, which is their first official UEFA title that the club has won under any sort of um, UEFA level, whether that be youth or sort of senior men's football as well. They've been in loads of European finals, but they've lost a load of them as well. As we mentioned in the PSV section, they lost on penalties there. So yeah, they've lost like 10 or 8 European finals, I think. Um, some of them were absolutely heartbreaking. I remember Branislav Ivanovic's last minute winner for Chelsea against them in the UEFA Cup. So yeah, there's a European curse on them right now, um, but they are an incredible club. They've won 37 leagues, 26 cups, seven league cups as well, as well as those two European cups as well. So despite their curse, they probably do belong in the Super League thanks to their incredible history. So everybody sees Benfica as this incredible club, which of course they are. They won two European cups, but they have that curse on them. So although they've got to a load of finals, they haven't actually won a lot of the finals, but staying in Port Portugal and going up north to Porto now. So Porto, they are incredible. They have won so much more in Europe and around the world than what Benfica have. So they've got two European Cups slash Champions Leagues of their own, which one they won in 87 and one they won, of course, in 2004 with Jose Mourinho. They have two UEFA Cups slash Europa Leagues as well in 2003, where they beat Celtic and 2011, where they beat Portuguese rivals Braga. They also won the Super Cup in 87 and they have two Intercontinental Cups. They, uh, after their two Champions League slash European Cup wins, they also became champions of the world. Add to that their Premier, their 30 Premier League titles, their 18 Portuguese Cups as well. And you have this incredible team with a massive winning culture, Porto. They deserve to be in the Super League just as much as anybody else. So next up is a team that haven't got a huge amount of sort of history in Europe, but domestically, I think that the stuff that they do in their own country means they probably deserve to be in there. And that is the Greek champions, Olympiakos. They have won the Greek Super League or the Greek top tier a record of 47 times. And they are currently, yeah, I think they've won the last three in a row now as well from when I'm recording this. They've won the Greek Cup 28 
68 times, another record. The Greek Super Cup four times, another record. And the Greater Greece Cup, which I don't think is around anymore, a record three times as well. They are just record winners of everything in their nation. Although they've only ever reached the quarterfinals of the Champions League. That was in 1999. They also reached the quarterfinals of the Cup Winners' Cup as well. That was in 1993. So European-wise, probably not as big as some of the teams that we've mentioned in this video today. But the mere fact that they have 47 league titles probably warrants a place within the Super League. Right, and the last team that I think should be in the Super League are Sevilla. So Sevilla, they've only won their league title in Spain once. That was in 1946. They've won the second division four times. They've won the Copa del Rey, the Spanish Cup five times. But it's what they've done in Europe, which I think uh, means they deserve a place in the Super League. They have won the Super Cup once, but they have won the Europa League a record six times. And they only won their first one in 2006. In 2006, 2007, 14, 15, 16, 16 and 20. So since 2006, what is that like? Um, for 16 years or something like that. For 16 years, they've won six Europa League slash UEFA Cups. That's incredible. Like imagine, so that's like the competition below the Champions League. Imagine saying to them, you're that good that you're, you're not being allowed in the Champions League. That's sort of what you're saying by not allowing them in the Super League. They're this incredible club that have dominated European second tier competition. Surely that means they get a shot at Europe's top tier competition as well. That being, in this instance, my alternate Super League. This video genuinely wasn't meant to come across as like a Man City bashing or a Spurs bashing or anything like that, um, or an Atleti bashing even. Um, I just think there are some clubs in and around the Europe Europe, who probably deserve to be in the Super League conversation just as much as some of the sort of smaller clubs that were in the original Super League. I, you know, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Liverpool, Man United, um, even Arsenal to a certain extent. I know they've not won the European Cup before, but they've got a great pedigree in Europe. They have won European competitions and they are great domestically or have been in the history, not so much recently. But yeah, Juventus, not great in the Champions League, great domestically. Um, AC Milan, fantastic in the Champions League and European Cup down their lives, so they probably deserve deserve to be in there. The whole concept of the Super League annoys me. This video is just supposed to be a little bit of fun uh, for you guys to kind of think about other teams that you'd sort of have to be in there. And it also um, takes a little bit of a dig at the hypocrisy of the of the Super League in that they can exclude so many great teams from the conversation. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Do let me know in the comments section below what teams you would maybe like to see in the Super League. Is there anyone I've missed out who are big domestically or who are big in Europe as well? Let me know in the comments section below. A huge, huge thank you for watching. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you know. I'll leave some videos on screen right now. Please click on one to carry on watching. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.